Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. I'm about to get into the first round of the draft that happened uh, uh, that happened while it was yesterday, but whenever you're watching this, it may be later. And uh, I want to thank you all for subscribing and hitting the bell and uh, comments down there in the comment section. It's freaking awesome. Um, all of your uh, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklaces are being sent out by Melissa and Hernandez in the Pearlocopters. Great. What an amazing day yesterday. Freaking awesome draft. My favorite day in the land. I love the draft. But I'm going to get into it. I don't want this to be too long. So I'm going to get right into uh, the uh, first round of the draft here. I want to remind you, steelflyers.com. The uh, website there is, go check it out now, but it, we're, we're improving it so you're going to be able to see our live programming all day, plus different writers for each uh, team in every sport and all that. It's going to be incredible. Also, if you like live programming, I go on the Steel Flyers YouTube all the time, and I also go in Sports Fanatics with the PH News and do live there all the time. So be checking that out when we go live and that's a group live where we have all three of us it's much frolic we did it for the draft it was great okay new york rangers took alex lafreniere lafreniere if you want uh nobody no surprise to anybody guys is uh most compared to miko rantanen uh it's sick the depth that they're gonna have with this guy like his top end is Mika Rantanen. you got Zabonijad, a 40-goal scoring defenseman. Panarin was up for MVP this year. And is Alexis Lafreniere. Lafreniere, who has great leadership capabilities. And oh my gosh. And then you got Kreider, uh, Heidel in the middle there. Kako that they got last year. Oh my gosh, what a crazy lineup these guys, those guys have there. Um, fantastic pick because that was really the only pick. I still think Askarov is going to be the best player in this draft when it's all said and done, when we look back at it 10 years from now. But uh, they've got Shesterkin, who is a pretty darn good goaltender as well. So I can definitely understand this pick anyways. L.A., Played a little coy with Quinton Byfield. They, they were trying to make it look like they might take Stutzla, uh, putting it up in the air that they really liked him because they wanted Ottawa to trade up because apparently Ottawa likes Stutzla better than Byfield. It was He was their guy. Didn't work. Ottawa didn't bite, and they ended up taking just, uh, Quinton Byfield, who is a six foot four 215 pound center they don't even they, they're stacked up the middle in their prospects with Turcott and Velarde but Velarde can play the left side very well he did last year so having a you know byfield Velarde two six four guys that can play like my gosh that could be one that could be just a wrecking ball of an offense with Kopitar and uh all of the other prospects that they got going up there. It, it, they're shaping up to have a fantastic forward group there. Ottawa taking Tim Stutzla uh, has been compared to a guy we just talked about in Panarin a lot. That's the guy that everybody seems to pick. I also heard some comparisons to Barzal, depending on if he plays wing or center. Now, he played wing in Germany against men and did very well over a point a game as a practically 17 year old my gosh this guy's got talent uh fantastic pick here I don't blame them for the pick I probably would have picked it myself then we go to Detroit who uh went what off the board for a lot of people not really me I could have seen him going anywhere actually Ottawa really loved him too apparently it was a tough pick between the two but I think they went with Stutzla because he can play center Lucas Raymond is is projected as a right winger I don't I'm not surprised by this pick by Stevie Weiserman because he is maybe the most intelligent guy in the draft He's a lot like Mitch Marner, sees the ice amazingly. His 
passing is fantastic and he has the speed to keep up with Larkin uh, so it's it's just with Bertuzzi there it just seems to be a perfect fit not to mention Detroit likes their Swedes it's not really a uh, it's not really a uh, secret that they like drafting they've had lots of Swedes in their organization uh, so I think it's a great pick Ottawa now takes a pick that I really am not fond of here. Um, I could turn out to be wrong because if any, there's a lot of teams that can really uh, do well with um, defensemen and Ottawa is one of them. Their, their uh, draft and development team for defensemen uh, percentage is fantastic. So who am I to say? Jake Sanderson forget, projects to be a guy like Morrissey in uh in Winnipeg, which is a one-two guy, not maybe the highest offensive upside. I think he may reach that, he may not, but he's going to be a solid defenseman in the league. It's kind of a safe pick. What raised a lot of eyebrows, though, of course, was that, oh, by the way, I would have taken Askarov if I was Detroit and Ottawa here for sure. And here's why. I'll tell you why. Ottawa especially is a team with, that doesn't have a lot of money. They can't spend to the cap. If you can't spend to the cap and you don't have a lot of money, the odds of you winning the cup are very slim if you don't have a price uh, type goaltender. And from what I'm hearing, there was a guy in, uh, I'll talk about it when we get to Askarov, Jamie Drysdale. Taken by Anaheim. He has been compared already to Makar. Uh, let's hope he reaches those levels. Then I've heard I've heard him all over the board here. I've heard a lot of people think that maybe he doesn't have the overall uh, game that Makar does um, and Hughes does. That he's going to be primarily offensive and maybe not the best defensive player. Uh, that could be troublesome for this pick if, if that's the case. But obviously Anaheim didn't think so. They are also really good at uh, developing defensemen. You got Manson there, Lindholm were drafted a little lower, but turned out to be fantastic picks for them. Taylor, who's now in Vegas, which I'm sure that they're kind of kicking themselves about, uh, but they do well at drafting and developing defensemen. So it's, he should get at least as high as he can get with Anaheim. New Jersey, everybody I heard, if, they, if Sanderson wasn't there, said that Alex, they were going to take Alexander Holtz. Alexander Holtz has been compared to Phil Kessel, no other than Phil Kessel, before he uh, started fading because of his lack of conditioning. He's got much better conditioning than Phil Kessel. That would be a 40-goal scorer, boys and girls. And if he's a 40-goal scorer, uh, then uh, fantastic, because they need scores in... Uh, New Jersey. They have Gusev and Hughes, Heischer, all playmakers. You wonder why Hughes didn't have the best year last year? A lot of it had to do with the fact that he didn't really have too much to pass to. Uh, Bratt is starting to look a little better, and of course Palmieri, he, he's a guy that does score a lot, but he generally doesn't score with the shot from the outside. He's a drive to the net guy. Holtz can shoot from anywhere and he can get to those places that he can score, which leads me to my next pick. The Buffalo Sabres, I believe, possibly make a mistake here by taking Jack Quinn. Jack Quinn is a lot like Holtz as far as the fact that he's got a wicked shot. Wicked shot. Scored 50 goals in 60-some games in junior. Now, the problem is... The way he scores his goals in junior is mostly perimeter, and that just doesn't generally fly in the NHL. Look at a guy like Jeff Skinner, who, if he's not playing with the intent to get to the net, he's a 25-goal scorer. If he's playing for $9 million a year, he's a 35-40-goal to 40 goal scorer. So Jack Quinn has got a lot of room to grow to get into the guy, be a player that can get there. Now, I'm not saying you can't. Development and ability to develop into that type of player, if he can, you got a great pick here. The thing is, let's go into my next pick, and, and he's a winger too. You've got an opportunity to take almost a for sure number one center in Mike, Marco Rossi here. 
Now, he wouldn't be a number one center in Buffalo because we have Reichel, but he projects like a point. He almost looks exactly like point. In fact, I could go as far as to say that he has a better center of gravity than point at the same age. I'm all over that pick up on Buffalo, and Minnesota did unbelievable to get Rossi here. I'm sure they were like, are you kidding me? Rossi drops to us? I don't think they thought in a million years Rossi would be here. I think they were going to go with the next guy who thought they more likely was going to be there in Cole Perfetti. Now, Cole Perfetti with Winnipeg, uh, the thing about this pick is he scares me in the sense that he reminds me a lot of what Peterson was when he was drafted in the same spot back when, what was that, two years ago? All the, the same things are being said about him as it was Peterson. For one thing, there's nobody with sicker hands in this draft than Perfetti as far as ability to score, uh, stick handling through traffic and all of that stuff like that. There's no better stick handler in this draft. The kid is amazing with the puck. Um, he may not project as a center, and that might be the reason why he fell here. He looks like he may be more of a winger, but even if he is, they said the same things about Peterson, by the way, because of his size. If he's got the drive that Peterson does, and in a lot of ways I think he does, one of the reasons why he fell here was he had a lot of, he answered a lot of questions very immaturely by the media, like saying things like, I, I, don't, I don't think it would be a good idea to me, for me to go to a dump and chase team. Because uh, they asked him what was his favorite team to go to or where would he like to go to. And all the players never really gives a lean on that. But um, he did say that and, and that kind of rubs some owners and managers the wrong way. It's like, okay, kid, that's not something you want to say, even if it's true. So anyways, they could have a Peterson here. Imagine Shifley Peterson up the middle. Woo! Peterson-like, of course. It's Perfetti. The next pick is the guy I think is going to be possibly, the I think, the best player in this draft when we look back 10 years from now, and that is Askarov. Askarov, I, was, I, I have a serious radio, and I listen to the NHL pro, bo, broadcasts there all the time. Plus, I read a lot about these guys. And one fellow in particular, and I wish I remembered his name, but I don't, he worked with a lot of goaltenders there in the NHL, one of them being Vasilevsky. And he very seriously and passionately said that Askarov is significantly ahead of Vasilevsky at this stage of his career, as, 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 as Vasilevsky was at that, at that age. That is amazing. If that's the case, you could be looking at a Dominic Hasek level type goaltender here. Nashville could have got the best player in the draft here and maybe saved Poyle's draw, draw, uh, job. However, he won't be able to come here for two years because he's already signed a two-year contract in the KHL. Regardless, I would have picked him all the way up to where Detroit picked Lucas Raymond. So now, Florida Panthers take Anton Lundell. I'm not sure about this pick. I think I would have took Seth Jarvis here. I just like his upper end talent more, uh, especially playing with uh, Barkoff and Huberdeau. I think that'd be some sick, uh, sick combination. I have a hard time compare, okay, comparing Anton Lundell. Um, he, he's, he's like a lot of players in the NHL, but he could be fantastic. It's his skating is a little bit of a problem. Um, I think he's, he's a prototypical possible second line, third line center, but he will be a very good defensive center in the NHL. Uh, maybe a guy like Nugent Hopkins, if he can reach that kind of offense. I'd say that's like his top end. Now, I've heard a lot of scouts say that he could be the Peterson of this draft, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. We'll find out. But I would have taken the next guy, Seth Jarvis, and Carolina takes him. Doesn't worry about what they need because they don't really need anything. They're stacked everywhere as far as prospects and depth on their lineup, except for goaltending. I'm sure they would have loved Askarov here. 
But they take Seth Jarvis, man, oh man, with Svechnikov, Aho, um, Tara Vinen, uh, Nietzsche, uh, Niederreiter, Mike, they had just stacked up front, these guys. It's incredible what this team may turn out to be. Stanley Cup contenders very soon. And that's Seth Jarvis' pick, who, by the way, I think could play. Uh, sooner than a lot of people do. He's growing fast. He's got the type of skill to make it. Also, maybe like Goudreau. Kind of reminds me of Goudreau. So think of that lineup and put a Goudreau in there. Rossi, by the way, uh, Seth Jarvis maybe doesn't have the same capabilities of playing soon like Rossi does. He's not as thick as Rossi is to play in the league right away. I wouldn't even worry about Rossi's 5'9 body. Like, I wouldn't worry about his size at all. Dylan Holloway goes to the Edmonton Oilers here. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of this pick, but Holland takes his time with players. And if this guy reaches his max, you could have a Couturier type guy here. I think it's more likely you're going to have a Couturier light. Uh, the third way, third line center possibly a winger but a power third line center who can put up points and do a lot of things in your lineup so um i'm not terrible i don't think it's a terrible pick i think it's kind of on the safe side in some ways not on the safe side because if he reaches his upside like a couturier it sure is a fantastic pick rodion amirov for the toronto maple leafs um, picked, um, I think it's a fantastic pick, and it's kind of the one that I wanted Edmonton to pick. Understandably, uh, also that Edmund, uh, Dylan Holloway is a center, and those are very are much harder to find. So, um, I but Rodion Amirov can play every way you want. That's what this kid brings. He can play every way you want, and. Uh, brings it every like he can play up and down your lineup he probably can be a 50 to 60 point score you can play uh he's a great player i liked it Caden Gouley for the montreal canadians they kind of went with a risky pick here but a high risk high reward if Gouley reaches what he can be a mobile big defenseman that can play well defensively we know a lot of them in the league um maybe like um why people's names are leaving me for some reason today so i'm not going to compare them because for some reason slavin maybe like slavin in uh carolina he's got the potential but he's going to be a project he's going to take a while he's got all the tools but the tools are scattered kind of all over the lawn lucas reichel now by the blackhawks is not a uh, risky pick at all um more than likely he's going to be a third line winger uh, but he's just too smart. He's great defensively. The question is how high he has an offense. It's possible he could be like a Marion Hosa type if he reaches those types of levels. New Jersey takes Dawson Mercer, who's been raging up the... Uh, the thing with Dawson Mercer is he's been going up the rankings so fast, you wonder how far he may go. Um, he has been, uh, he has been, he made it to the World Juniors last year when nobody expected him to. This is a guy that reaches levels that nobody really expects him to reach. So, like, a Wheeler guy is what I've been heard. If he can reach those levels, what a great pick when you think about Alexander Holtz uh, and Wheeler as a, as, a, as a center there, a big center that they kind of need with Hughes and, uh, um, they got Zaka there, but he hasn't really been turning out the way they want. So a good pick, great pick. A lot of people thought they were going to take the next guy, Braden Schneider, there because they knew he did, did need defense. Now, Braden Schneider moves up in the draft to get uh, past Calgary to get Braden Schneider because they were pretty sure New Jersey was going to take him with their second pick. So... Um, there we go. We take they take Braden Schneider, move down to the 22 spot, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Braden Schneider is your prototypical defensive defenseman. He could be in many. Uh, 
uh, a lot of people are talk, comparing him to Brandon Carlo. And if he can become like Carlo, wow, what a great pick for the Rangers. Um, I was looking at their, I've been looking at the Rangers a lot because their lineup looks like it's going to be dynasty levels in the next little while here. But one thing that they definitely need in their prospect uh, pool and in their lineup in general, actually, is defensemen. So, uh, nice pick. I don't know how long it's going to take them to, to, to develop, but um, I like it. So New Jersey then goes, oh no, Schneider's gone. So they go to their next guy that they like, and that is uh, Shakir Mukamadoulin, who was projected as a second rounder, actually. But I talked about him quite a bit in my pre-draft, if you remember. I'm sure you do, because everybody's watching this, right? We all know that. <laughs> Maybe, I'm sure that... Uh, uh, Fitzgerald was watching and he said, hey, Perlo likes Makamadoulin, I better pick him. Another defensive defenseman, big, rangy defensive defenseman. They are huge to find if you can find them, and I don't mind this pick here as a lot of people thought otherwise. Um, then Columbus picks Yegor Shinakov, who is way off the board. Kind of wonder why they didn't trade down. Maybe they thought there was other teams that were on on this kid in on this kid too playing in the nhl this year already and putting up points a lot also kekaline and the general manager for the columbus blue jackets is known as the wayne gretzky of freaking scouting in europe i would not doubt that this kid turns out amazing i don't really know all that about him but i do know enough to say he's a lot better probably a lot better than i know because of that. Hendrix Leperrier, did I hit the button? Hendrix Leperrier, on the other hand, uh, is, uh, I, I thought I didn't hit the button to get recording here. Anyways, Hendrix Leperrier, now Calgary dro drops down in the draft again, doesn't take H Hendrix Leperrier there, and if you heard me in my pre-draft, I thought this guy could go as high as 9 or 10 if his concussion or head problems, migraine problems, they, if a team thought they would get resolved because this guy is like Bergeron or Couturier or somebody like that. If he turns out to be that and he makes it and he gets over his head injury problems, whatever they may be, the Capitals got an absolute steal here who could be ready a lot sooner than a lot of these guys. Um, this could really make them into quite the contender darn quick. I love the pick. Why not take the risk here, I say. Philadelphia, who is my other team with the Edmonton Oilers, takes Tyson Furster. I don't mind the pick. He's This guy's got a killer shot. From what I understand, one of the best shots in the draft. Up there close to the Quins and Holtzes. However, it's getting the speed to get to those spots. Tyson Furster's first couple steps are explosiveness is not on the level of a lot of teams and players in this area. Now, if he can get to those spots, though, he's got the physicality to do it, he just might have a steal here. I'm a little concerned with Philly taking another player, though, that has skating issues. He could be fantastic pick, though. Connor Zari, safe pick by Calgary. After trading down twice and not taking Hendricks Leperrier here, this could look like a really bad pick. Connor Zari projects as a third line center who can put up 30 or 40 points, play every way possible. It's just kind of a safe pick for me. Justin Barron by Colorado Avalanche. Now, uh, this Barron was supposed to be, was projected higher. Had, I believe it was shoulder injury problems, which shouldn't be a problem. And I think Joe Sackick, one of the smartest guys there is out there in, in hockey, like Stevie Y, him and his staff said, you know what, that injury is not going to be a long-term issue. Uh, Justin Barron could turn into a defensive stud. A guy that they compare him to is like the old Adam Foote type guy. He's a better skater than Foote. But if he turns into that, and Colorado has tons of uh, defensemen in their system, but they took the best guy available. St. Louis takes a safe pick with Jake Neighbors. They like to take these kind of guys. 
probably a 3-4 guy. I'm not sure I'd fond of this pick here. I'd rather take him in the second round, especially when you have the next pick, Jacob Perot, who has a much more offensive pick, who, by the way, kind of projects as uh, Perron, who they already have in their lineup, a, more of a scorer type guy. It's just going to be a question if he can get his body, but he's already pretty built for a 5'11 guy. I would have preferred Perot. We'll find out if I'm right somewhere down the road. Um, Perot, I think, could have went to the Montreal Canadiens, to Chicago, could have went all over the place. He's just got that kind of game that can could potentially be a very offensive, high-scoring player. Ridley Gregg, I'm not a fan of this pick. Um, he does project as a Michael Pekka type. I don't know if his offense is going to project into the NHL, to tell you the honest truth. The thing is, he just seems like possibly a third or fourth liner. I'm not sure why we want to pick that kind of a player here when you have your next pick, Vegas, taking Brendan Bryson, who I think could end up being a very good second line winger. Um, I like his, I, I actually kind of like this pick better for the Philadelphia Flyers who took Tyson Forster, although he doesn't have anywhere near as good of a shot. I think his overall game projects more uh, to a second line role. We'll find out if I'm right, won't we? Then we got Maverick Bork going to Dallas. I think this two. He's too perimeter of a pick to pick here. There's a lot of guys who um, are in the second round, a couple of Russians, and I'm not even going to try to say, say their names, but uh, I can't remember who picked them now, but there's one particular Russian there. He's about 5'9". You guys can tell me in the comment section what his name was, but uh, I would have picked him here because his offense is fantastic and his compete level is awesome. I would have rather that than a Maverick Bork who plays a very perimeter game. Um, maybe I'll go real quick. I'll look for him in the second round before I head off here. Ozzy Weisblatt. Now, I would have picked this pick, San Jose picked, over Maverick Bork. He's a little, uh, he just, he gets into the zones more. He's not as perimeter as Maverick Bork is. Um, I like his game and his compete level a little more than Maverick Bork. Now, saying all this, these kids are all 18 years old. There's maturity things. They could change their game. Dallas is great at player development. So, um, who knows where they go? I'm just looking at where they are right now. But they're looking at projected, and the guy I'm talking about is this guy, Murat Kuznetinov. Murat Kuznetinov is a small center, but he doesn't play like a small center at all. He plays really big. He has like he's like a Max Domi, if Max Domi could possibly put up a point a game. I love, love, love him, and I would have picked him earlier in this draft. Some other guys were Jason Paterka, who is a safe pick by San Jose, and they took San Jose and Weisblock, so that's going to be very interesting. Um, uh, Ryan O'Rourke, big, big defenseman, plays hard. He could have went in the first. Nice pick by Minnesota. Noel Gunler goes to Carolina, who picked Seth Jarvis. I don't know why Gundler went down. I think the problem is, is there were some issues with him not going to the international tournaments for whatever reason, and nobody seems to be able to give you a reason. Possible adult attitude problems, maybe he's very immature, um, maybe commitment issues, all that kind of stuff like that. But that kid has got an amazing shot and could be a fantastic pick for Carolina. Well, that's my full 42. I'm not going to get too much more into the second round. We're already into a half an hour. This has been awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to just subscribe. Tell me what you think about this draft, what I just talked about. Tell me I'm crazy, whatever you want to say, uh, and everything. I love the comment section, and thank you for tuning in. That's my full 42. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.